my favorite people in the whole wide world are the people that prepare the way ministries. Pastor Ralph Casebolt has stood with me and the people that prepare the way ministries have stood with me. And I wanna thank you personally. And uh, I am so excited to come to you via this recording with the good glad news that Jesus Christ is still Lord. They told me that I had three strokes, but Jesus Christ told me that I am healed. And if I'm a little bit emotional, I just want you to know that it's because I am so excited to share the good news that Jesus Christ is the healer. He restores, he does it all, nobody does it better. God is still on the throne. And I am so excited come to you and just with good news. He lives, he loves, he saves, he cares, he heals, he feels, he restores, and he's coming again. And the excitement that I share today is the fact that I'm a living, walking, breathing testimony that God is still on the throne. At the beginning of, of 2022, I got so excited when I looked down here at John 20, 22, and I saw these words. And he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And I immediately grabbed John 20, 22 and said, 2022 will be the year of Holy Ghost revival. And I believed that. And then I said something like, if he's not breathing on you, you got bad breath, but he's breathing up, if he's breathing upon you, there's a restoration of your soul and a rejuvenation of your life. So I'm excited to approach you today with the good news that the breath of God is fresh. There's inspiration, information, illumination, and God is going to touch you on the living level of your life today. Jesus Christ is Lord. I have a message that I want to share with you that I believe is, is very apropos. Dr. Mike Brown, pastor of Faith and Wisdom Church, in Branson, Missouri, shared this with me not long ago. These words, a real move of God is confrontational, transformational, impartational, generational. It's more than just rhyme, rhyming to this. This is, this is truth, and the truth will set you free. A real move of God, number one, is confrontational. When Jesus came, there was confrontation. And Jesus Christ doesn't just come to calm you down. He comes to stir you up. And real revival will make you mad. Real revival will change your life. There's an impact when real revival comes. It's confrontational. There's friction. There's two different worlds. Those worlds collide. There's a collusion and a collision when Holy Ghost revival comes in. Sometimes it's not comfortable. But it will change the atmosphere and it is confrontational. I remember the, the day that Jesus sat down with the Pharisee. If I'm not mistaken, he called him a hypocrite eight times before supper was over. And that, 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 I would say, would cause some indigestion. But it is confrontational. The preacher was preaching, and, and the uh, man came up and said, you know, you're rubbing the cat the wrong way. He said, turn the cat around. And there's something about changing directions and changing the changing of your life that will impact everything. But God doesn't come just to calm you down. He comes to stir you up. Real revival can make you mad. And, uh, but if you hold on to God, it'll make you glad. Set you free. Because there is a collision and a collusion with two worlds. Those worlds collide. Oil and gasoline does not mix. And uh, when God comes in, the devil's got to pack up his duds and go out. They don't dwell good together. 
And so God wants to change your life. He wants to impact your life. Uh, everything that we've been through recently tells me that we're on course. That 2022 is the year of Holy Ghost Revival. When I announced that and when I made the declaration, this is the year of Holy Ghost Revival, I knew that I was rubbing the fur the wrong way. But I also knew that this was the will of God that we make this statement. I want you to grab a hold of that and I want you to, to embrace that confession that this is our year for a sovereign move of God. Now let me, let me reiterate, a, a real move of God is confrontational, but a real move of God is also transformational. I've said this before and you've heard me say this. It'll take you from dope to hope, from the bottle to the Bible, from a tavern to a temple, from heartaches to hallelujahs, from a sinner to a winner, from abject poverty to riches unsearchable, joy unspeakable and full of glory. The half has not yet been told. God is on the throne to impact your life. It's not business as usual. Everything that God does, he will upset the apple cart, but he's on the throne to impact your life in a powerful way. A move of God will take you from disgrace to his grace, from sadness to gladness, from a sinner to a winner. And as I said before, from disgrace to his grace, he's on the throne to set you free. A real move of God is not only uh, confrontational, but it's transformational. The fruit of revival has changed lives. When you have a move of God, things start changing. But the main thing, God will change your life. He will impact your life. A real move of God is transformational. When Jesus came to town, when he left town, things were changed. He doesn't leave things the same. It's like the aftermath of a hurricane. When a real revival hits a community or hits a nation, there are going to be changes from the White House to the courthouse to the schoolhouse to the church house to the state house changes. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. The things that cannot be shaken will remain. And so I want you to get a hold of this truth. God wants to change your life. A real move of God is not only confrontational, transformational, but it's impartational. And what I mean by this is God will impart truth into your life that will bring forth changes. Uh, Jesus Christ doesn't come to just embrace the status quo. It's not business as usual. Everything changes, but not only does everything change, but you will change. God will change your life. When I talk about impartation, I remember the, the day, or the night rather, that John Kilpatrick stood behind the pulpit and said, Steve, I want you to lay your coat on John Davis. And that was new to me. I didn't, I didn't know what that was about, but I was so hungry for revival. In fact, I was so discontent, dissatisfied with myself that I would have let Steve, I said before, I'd let him put his dirty socks on me. I was just hungry for a move of God. But when he said those words, I want you to put your coat on John Davis. When I followed Steve Hill around as I was praying for the people, at some juncture, Steve stopped and said, it's time. I remember he took his coat off and he put it on me. And when he did, I dropped like a sack of potatoes to the floor. And it was very noticeable and very, very powerful. And as I lay on the floor, there was a, there was a roar that came out of my belly that was, uh, that was so different. And I knew there was something going on. 
I didn't know exactly what was happening, but I was, there was a noise. And that noise, as, as loud as it was, there was a lot of noise in the building that night, so everybody was receiving impartation. But uh, as that noise grew louder, I said, Lord, what are you doing? And as clear as I've ever heard anything in my life, I heard God say these words, I'm giving voice to your ministry. From that day forward, my ministry changed. From that day forward, we literally went from, from just a ministry of status quo to a supernatural ministry of power and anointing. I began to fly high in the glory. It was noticeable. There was a change. It was a difference. Uh, I think of the words that John and Peter told the, the, the uh, crippled man. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Something transferred to me that transformed me. And there again, there's that change. My life was forever changed. I was transformed. I wasn't the same. And so, even though my denomination did not embrace or teach impartation, I knew there was something real, that something had been given to me that, uh, and I would never be the same. And from that day forward, I began to pursue men of God that had something that I didn't have. I knew Steve Hill had something that I didn't have. And so as the evangelists of the Pensacola outpouring of the Brownsville revival, I would stand in line for him to lay hands on me and for John Kilpatrick to pray for me. And for those that had been touched and torched by the fires of revival to, to pray for me, hoping that I would receive transformation and impartation. In fact, when someone would come from the Argentine revival, or the Toronto outpouring. Anyone that had been touched by revival, I stood in line. I was hungry for something I didn't have. They had something I didn't have. I know it comes from God, and I, there's no doubt about it that it's, it's supernatural. But I didn't have that, and I wanted that. I was hungry. The hunger was such to where I was wide open for fresh oil, new wine. And so the reality of that transformation and an importation, such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Randy Clark laid hands on me. Carlos Anacondia laid hands on me. And uh, Claudio Frizon and Sergio Scataglini and these men from the Argentine revival I made it a, a point that all of them would touch me in hopes that what they had came on me. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not ashamed to talk about my hunger for God. Uh, that hunger is still here. If you've got something I don't have, I'm hungry. I want it. I will pursue the anointing. I will pursue anointed men of God, Bill Johnson, Randy Clark. I made it a point that all of these men of God would touch me. They, they all came through uh, the Pensacola Revival and, and they all laid hands on me. What if, what if a man of God can stand and lay hands? And I know they can impart truth, but I also believe that there is a, there are spiritual gifts they can impart. I so said, don't ask me to explain it. I know it's from God. I don't, I don't challenge that. I know all good gifts come from the Lord. But Jesus wants to touch you in a powerful way. And by the way, it's not just, you know, people with names or big names, such as these men of God that I've just mentioned. But one night, there was a little lady that that uh, 
she approached me and asked if she could lay hands on me. And I thought, well, you know, what could hurt? And so, sure, I consented. And when I consented, she prayed a prayer with hands laid on me that impacted my life in such a way that I, I don't know how many how many feet that I was thrown, but I was thrown through the air. And God changed my life. We use that, that statement a lot, God changed my life, but there was change and real revival. The fruit of real revival is changed lives. God wants to change your life, set you free, impact you forever, time and eternity. You'll never be the same. I believe that. And this morning, I'm believing in Jesus' name that right there, in the presence of God, God is going to impact your life in a powerful way. I've, I've lived for this moment that I can return to you, even though it's via the internet, the, 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 the power of the internet can impact your life. And right here, through these airwaves in a supernatural way, God is going to impact your life and change you for time and eternity. A real move of God is confrontational, impartational, transformational, but it's also generational. Time and again, he's referred to as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which means he's a God of every generation. And also, he's... Uh, He gives the promise that is to your children, to your children's children, to as many as are far off, many as our Lord our God shall call. And your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and it shall be for your children and your children's children. And so I'm going to say right now, we, I long to come up and lay hands on the children of revival. So my fondest memories are praying for the children of revival. And we're not ashamed to lay hands upon the little people and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. But via the internet, I'm going to pray the command of deliverance and the prayer of faith today and declare for a decree that Jesus Christ is changing your life. I'm just so excited. I'm excited, number one, about being alive. I really do believe that this was an attack to take me out. But God's not finished with me yet. They tell me I've had three strokes, but the great physician tells me I am healed. And so I claim that healing. And by the grace of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to declare for a decree that the long night is over. It's been like a nightmare, but the long night is over. Jesus Christ is Lord. He lives, he loves, he saves, he cares, and he's coming again. And I want you to grab a hold of this word today. The, 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 a real move of God is confrontational, it's impartational, it's transformational, it's generational. And uh, the real fruit of revival is changed lives. God wants to change your life today. So I want you to reach out by faith and grab a hold of this word and make it a personal word, a powerful word. Make it your word. Just say, John Davis, I claim that word today. The move of God is for me. At the beginning of the year, I declared that this year, 2022, I thought this was more than just coincidental that John 2022 said, he breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. I, I felt like it was, it was more than coincidence. And so I said, this is the year of Holy Ghost revival. No sooner did I say that than, than all hell rose up to fight. But I stand by that declaration. I stand by this exclamation, powerful proclamation. A, a world in crisis needs a church in revival. And the church needs revival for survival. Our greatest need is a sovereign move of God. I don't have to tell you about the mess that we're all in today. But God can take this mess and turn it to a message. 
and the message is this, it shall come to pass. Not maybe think so, you never know, but it shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And so all flesh, that excludes nobody. That means the entirety of the world is ripe for a sovereign move of God. In this world's darkest hour, I believe God's going to come in mighty power with a fresh impartation and an outpouring of, of the Holy Spirit. So let it begin this morning with Prepare the Way Ministries. Let it begin right now in Jesus' name. A real move of God is confrontational, impartational, transformational, generational on your children, your children's children. As many as our Lord our God shall call. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which simply means that he desires that every generation have their own move of God. I, I refuse, I refuse to be a generation that does not have a move of God. My heart's cry, my heart's cry, the burden of my life is to lay on my face until I see it. And we're going to see it together in Jesus' name. I want to personally thank you for your prayers. You have stood with me. I know of no group that has stood with me any, any more fervent than Prepare the Way Ministries. Every one of you, every one of you have stood with me from the Children of Revival that would send me gifts and told me about their prayers, the cards that you sent me. It has impacted my life. I will never be the same. I am, I refuse to settle for second best or for some kind of a, a just tell me about it experience. My wife would come in every night when I was going through the strokes and she would turn the scriptures on and she'd play those scriptures until the atmosphere was alive and vibrant with the presence of God. Those words would reverberate throughout the night. And uh, I do believe that as a result of, of her turning those scriptures on, that, uh, that I am healed in Jesus' name. But I want it not to be just about my testimony. I want you to embrace the fact that this is your hour of power, this is your day for a mighty move of God. So I want you to stand on the authoritative ability of God's infallible word and declare for decree that Jesus Christ is my Lord, he's my savior, he's my best friend, he's my healer, he's my baptizer. Let's have a move of God. And as we receive, we're going to declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord of our lives. I am so excited to talk to you. I will come to you soon. As soon as, as, as the doctors release me, I'm coming back to Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. I'm so excited about coming to see you personally and lay hands on you and pray the prayer of faith, the command of deliverance. But until then, I want to impart to you something. But until those days... I'm sharing the truth of God's word in impartation. And I'm giving you truth to set you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It may make you mad at first, but it'll make you free. It'll change your life. Because the word of God is confrontational, impartational, transformational, generational. To all generations. Jesus Christ is Lord of our lives. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I pray for the precious people, my precious friends in Prepare the Way Ministries. I pray in Jesus' name, Father, for Pastor Ralph as he ministers in Texas this week, that there'll be a supernatural release of fresh oil 
when he arrives. There'll be such an impartation. There'll be a change in the atmosphere. And I pray in Jesus' name for traveling mercy, traveling grace on the highway. And Lord, the people at River of Life Ministries are about ready to receive a life-changing word that will impact them forever. They will never be the same. In the mighty name of the mighty Jesus. Shele de Didi Kasaya. I pray for every one of you. I pray for all the families that are represented today. That you will never be the same. You're going to rise up and say, This is my promise. This is my hour. This is my day. And I'm going to walk into my destiny. By the grace of God, the rest of my life, I'm going to receive fresh impartation. I'm going to have my life changed. Transformation. The real fruit of revival is change lives. When Jesus came to town, nothing was ever the same. He changed lives. And he wants to change your life. If you may be in Christ, old things are passed away and all things become new. The old is gone, the new has come. And I want to declare for a decree that you will never be the same as a result of this Sunday morning. In the name of Jesus, stand and declare, I believe that I receive. I can see you right now. In fact, I can see Pastor Ralph Case both. And I can see Prepare the Way Ministry standing as one man with one voice and saying, this is my word for today. This is the first time that I have spoken publicly, even though it's via the internet. I'm coming to you with the good, glad news. He lives, he loves, he saves, he cares. And he's coming again. Let Jesus Christ ring true that this is our hour of power. This is our day of deliverance. And we believe that we receive in Jesus' name. Let the word of God rise up and invigorate you today. In Jesus' name. I can see you right now with your hands in the air praising God. And even those that are watching via the internet. I want to I want to bless you with impartation, supernatural, and you know, we can reach through the airwaves and impact your life in Jesus' name. And by the way, I want to thank you for your financial support. Pastor Ralph always affords me the opportunity to, to challenge you. Well, through PayPal, you can sow seed and give to our ministry. And um, you can make the check to John Davis Ministries. You can push PayPal, John Davis Ministries. And, uh, and my buddy, Jeremy, will put that on the uh, internet right now where you can just push a, a button. And, uh, and, and your faithfulness, your faithfulness of support means so much to me. I can't tell you what it means to be able to say that we, uh, we are, are debt free and uh, we've, we've kept up with all of our obligations and our finances. There have been no worries with all that. Pastor Ralph has been so good to me and, and you. Those of you that have been faithful down through the months and the years to support us, we are now, we've now been coming to prepare the way ministries in Kansas City now for, for five years. Five is the number of grace. Jesus. We believe that we receive God's amazing grace. God's grace is sufficient. And God's grace will prevail in your life. And I bless you for sowing seed. If you would just obey God, and even those that are watching, if you would just obey God, every need met, every bill paid, every debt eliminated, not just for us and our ministry, 
but for you. In the mighty name of the mighty Jesus, we see it, we say it, and we sow it. We obey God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're, uh, what a blessing you are to John Davis Ministries. What a blessing you are to America Back to God. You know the vision that God gave us, America Back to God. There's some changes coming. I believe there's coming a day here soon where we will shut down the, the abortion mills. No more abortions. In Jesus' name, I believe the day is coming soon where the tide is going to turn and the judgment of God is going to leave this nation and there is a revival, a move of God, a sovereign move of God. God gave me the words, America, back to God. When he gave that to me, it was noticeable. It was visible, tangible. It impacted my life. I got up and shared the vision. The, those that were there, on Sunday morning at Prepare the Way Ministries. It was so impacting. I said, folks, I just had a vision of America back to God. I didn't know what to do with it, but I knew it was bigger than me. Well, let me share this with you. There's some things that's going to happen here soon that's going to initiate a sovereign move of God in this nation. We believe, we've been praying to that extent we're about ready to start the America Back to God prayer channel, the America Back to God YouTube channel. And my son is going to work with me here in Branson to make sure we can come to you each week, maybe even on a daily basis, with scriptures and with promises from God. It's not God's will that this, this nation languish and go the route of the Roman Empire and other nations. We believe that God has raised up America as a bastion of Holy Ghost revival. And in Jesus' name, this is a missionary enterprise, missionary nation. This is a praying nation. In God, we still trust. I want to declare it. In God, we still trust. You embrace that, and in Jesus' name, you confess that every day of your life. I love the decrees that Sister Barbara makes on Sunday mornings, and I, I long to be back under the sound of those decrees as the Word of God goes forth with power and liberty and victory and anointing. So in Jesus' name, Mila Koso Ribara Kasatara Katai, I make no apologies for my enthusiasm because this is more than enthusiasm. This is power that is reaching out to you. And in Jesus' name, I set you free. I bless you with divine impartation. I call your family saved. I call your family healed by the power of God. There's some changes going on right now. Real revival is confrontational. It doesn't, you don't stay the same. It changes your life. It's transformational, it's impartational, it's generational. But don't fight what God is doing. Stand up and declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my family, of my life. I pray for my grandkids every day and for our family. And I declare for a decree that our blended family is going to receive a fresh impartation of Holy Ghost revival. And we will never be the same. In the mighty name of the mighty Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Jesus, touch everyone, even the children of the Bible. Impact this generation. And Father, raise it up. The children of the Bible, raise this generation up as a mighty testimony of your glory in Jesus' name. I'm going to bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and I release anointing, fresh anointing upon your life. I want you to go with God. God will go with you. He will impact your life. You'll never be the same in Jesus' name. I just feel so full of the Holy Ghost. I'm giving you everything I have right now. 
given as fresh oil, as fresh anointing and fresh manna to you. The bread of life is coming to you right now in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of the mighty Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for all you're doing right now. I'm, I'm believing for healing for your bodies, salvation, restoration for your soul. Your family is impacted by the grace of God. I rebuke demonic forces from your lives, and I set you free in Jesus' name. I bless you right now. Father, we give you the glory, all the honor and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I'm even receiving my healing right now as I minister life to you. I believe that God, one of my favorite verses is, He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. God's going to finish what he started in my life. I am healed, and I claim that right now. And just me ministering to you is continuing that healing power in my life. So I set you free right now in Jesus' name. And right now, you rise up. You claim that. Claim it for your family. It is mine. Say, John Davis, this is mine. This is my promise this is my year of Holy Ghost revival hallelujah 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 Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord I'm going to let you go right now but as I let you go I bless you with supernatural release of increase your finances are blessed above and beyond in Jesus name thank you so much for your faithfulness in tithing and offerings. You've been so faithful in revival offerings. And as I, as I release you right now in Jesus' name, Debbie and I send our blessing with you and upon you. You are blessed and highly favored of God, the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You lend and, and don't borrow. I'm claiming the promises of Deuteronomy over your life. You're the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. And we believe that we receive in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.